Everything should be fine. Let us know right now if there are any technical difficulties, but I'm pretty sure we ironed those out yesterday. So once again, Team Yami represented by the color blue today with two Asian prides. So don't get confused when we say Asian pride and Asian pride. Yeah, they're both playing tanks, by the way. So they make it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we have Ironside represented by the color red today with a top lane rise most likely that is played by team captain, I believe, Lear. Liar. I'm going to say Lear. And... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this moment to um, to match up the top lane so nobody gets confused here. I know I'm really bad at doing that. Uh, one second. Okay, that should be good. So you guys can see the, the lane farm and all that. We have to do it in real time because it's a live tournament. Hmm. And it's online, by the way. What the hell? Look at this arcade Sona. Is she is she having a seizure on your screen too? Uh, she's not bugging out on my screen. Um, so <laughs> I don't know what you're seeing though. <laughs> I'm seeing her hair like... She's skydiving or something. Okay, now she's normal. I think he was spamming some kind of some kind of animation there. <laughs> That's probably what it was. Uh, I don't know what he was doing. It's funny though. Lots of things going on from both teams, but no aggressive positioning from either side, apart from maybe box top here. This Malzahar player, who's gonna really wig me out if he doesn't go in the mid lane. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. But uh, yeah, everything's gonna be normal here. Jarvin's gonna be starting his blue which is uh, not a surprise. While Zach starts his red, uh, he can really yeah. go either way. I mean, CDR is very valuable for Zach, but for early ganks, definitely, and, you know, wave clear, um, most likely. I don't know wave clear. Yeah, he can definitely just him. grab his his red, hit level two, and immediately dive in if he wants to. He can, And yeah. he will have less damage overall because he only have one damage ability, and then, of course, he'll take Elastic Slingshot at level two if he does that. Uh, but it's so early, it's so fast. I mean, you can't beat that, right? I mean, there's a great chance to gank uh, mid lane. And they're doing a lane swap, by the way. They're running Caitlyn Janna mid versus Orianna, and uh, they're running Malzahar bot versus Tristana and Sona, which is not a bad idea. I mean, that seems to be the, the thing nowadays people are doing, is uh, doing the lane swaps until they take the first tower. And... Yeah, I've definitely seen that a lot. This is not the first time we've seen it in this tournament. Um, it's 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 a bittersweet situation. I mean, Ambium is going to be getting really zoned here. I'm thinking yeah. that's probably why Ironside has opted to go with this strategy is because Ambium is he's the master race. You know, I haven't seen enough of his play to say that he's the best player on Yami by any means, but uh, maybe they might be doing this specifically to counter Ambium. I, I really don't know, but either way, it's pretty standard. I mean, Caitlyn is going to be zoning Orianna super, super hard here. She has two CS at this point, no. and she's no doubt going to be suffering her EXP as well. Right, right, right. Absolutely. And if they manage to hold back Orianna so for a late ult, then they could actually push uh, that mid tower really early. And without Shockwave to defend it, it's gonna ha she's going to have a really tough time. Mm -hmm. Asian Pride here sapping some experience, yep. helping to clear this mid lane wave. I, um, I don't know about this. I mean, he's going to be cutting NVM's experience in half. Zach now dinging yeah. level four. He's way yeah. ahead in terms of experience because of what he's doing right now. Yeah, he went for the blue. He didn't go for that early gank. He went for straight for the red and blue. And uh, now he's just kind of holding the lane. So I don't like this this uh, concept though their strategy of running a dual lane mid. Uh, I mean I'm talking about Yami yeah, um, yeah, yeah. because yeah they're gonna they're just gonna shoot themselves in the foot. Honestly. Yeah, Oriana is gonna be suffocating here for yeah. experience. She's still level two, ladies and gentlemen. Just, just level, now three. Being level yeah. three. Yeah. So she's way uh, behind. Uh, there's Asia definitely a huge opportunity to push this tower farm. down. Well, he's he's crazy. He's snatching up all the farm in the mid lane right there. This act yeah. player. Uh, so this, I, I, man, I gotta see how this plays out for them if they're planning on doing some some sort of strange strategy here. But yeah. Asian Pride lands the taunt under the tower. Lear takes wow. two tower hits right there. Ouch! Even with the two Ignite tower goes down hits, Lear exchange first blood <laughs> goes to Yami and he oh, survives. Man. Ouch. Oh man, I feel so bad for that. I mean, Lear uh, so far ahead in that lane, and clearly even with the two tower hits, made it that close because of the, the champion dominance. Was, he, just, he just got one step too close to that tower and Shen took advantage of that perfectly. Yeah, that was Man. max range on the tower right yeah. there. Such a, so so sad to see. Lear, Lear must be smashed right yeah, there. Yeah, Lear is definitely face palming that one because he came into a situation where he had a huge advantage in the champion matchup and he should have absolutely dominated his lane and he was until he made one crucial mistake. And mm -hmm. Oops, and there you go. And now Shen, has a kill. Fortunately, though, a scaling or you know snowballing Shen is really not that big of a deal. I mean, he basically does the same thing he does no matter what, which is split push and then jump in and, and be annoying in team fights. My um, name's Chromar. Snowballing Shen's not a big deal. Not that one. It depends on what champion it is. Come on, calm down. But Rai's snowballing on the other hand would be huge. 
and if Iron Sides were to get that have that happen, it'd be interesting. But uh, Asian oh, Pride still man. sitting here in mid lane. I don't know what they're man. doing. Maybe they're hoping no. for a really early level six on Zach so he yeah. can bounce it, so yeah. he can uh, so he can bounce all over the place. Let's yeah. bounce. Is that still the name of his ability? It let's is. Let's bounce. It is. Let's bounce. But check out uh, Alias. Like I saw him go bot lane. I thought he was just ganking, but he is still there. Like we watched all that yeah, action yeah, going yeah. up top lane, and Alias is not left. So it looks like they're both <laughs> they're running no jungle here, and this is uh, this is not like uh, you know a bunch of level fifteen. Players, either these are these are high, very high ranked players. We've got platinums, diamonds, and so on. Even Arxy Slash is actually part of a challenger team as a support player. Hmm. So these are extremely high ranked players, like top two percent or better in the world, and they're running uh, no jungle. <laughs> they are jungling uh, Jarvan to a lesser a little bit. He's going. To, he's cleaning up his wolves, and that's about it. And then returning to lane. Yeah, definitely no map presence though from these junglers. No, they are no, totally no, no. tunnel vision on these two v one lanes here. Uh, and that's interesting because this is not something that Chromar and I are used to seeing no. uh, in our casting experience, but it could very well be some new development. I mean, as we know, the meta is always shifting. Yeah. And while I say that, Zach, aka Asian Prize, should be very close to his level six. And if he doesn't make a move at that point, I'd be very surprised. But he's so far behind in his uh, HP right now mm -hmm. that uh, slingshotting against this mid lane team would be very, very dangerous. Although he does still have his passive. Jarvan does appear like he's going in from behind. They might be doing some kind of a tower dive on this low HP Zach, but don't forget his passive, his is, passive still is still active. still up. Yeah, but Avium yeah. actually focusing Anvium instead. Shen oh, ulting the wrong Avium target. Survives, though. Wow, Avium did actually live through that. That's amazing. I think if. Uh, I think they should have waited just a little bit longer for Caitlyn to hit level 6. They would have definitely hit it first, and then they could have definitely got that kill on Oriana uh, had they just waited a little bit longer. But it was actually a really good gank, and I found it interesting mm -hmm. that Asian Pride, uh, aka the Shen one, uh, actually ulted the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a real opportunity there uh, if they just had gone and just waited a little bit before they went in. But they're they will the be taking anyway, this so tower happy. here. Ironside yeah. deciding to take a yep. seven-minute tower here, ladies and gentlemen, in the yeah. mid lane. That's that's generally the reason why you do the lane swap is because you have confidence that you can outpush them, and you can do, force that two v one tower down and then go roam. Maybe take your lane back. Now box top has control of the lane if he wants to go back to mid. That's why you do it. But what you don't normally see is the jungler holding the lane with you the whole time. I mean, when I saw Zach do that, we we both said that like a hundred times. It's yeah, kind of questioning strange. that. Uh, and then I was really surprised when I really, when Aurelius or Alias, excuse me, did the same thing. I mean, usually <laughs> since they're the team that forced the swap, I'd have expected them to uh, plan around a one v, you know, a two v one Malzahar. I don't know. Uh, so I am, I'm, uh, but I am intrigued because uh, we're seeing new stuff happening right here. One thing is for sure: the person who is furthest behind as a result of these lane swaps is Anvium, the master race. The Oriana player now at 23 CS and level five versus Malzahar, who was in a 2v1 situation. It's now level seven with 45 CS. So Anvium is really hurting. And as a result of that, Team Yami is not gonna have much of an AP carry for the, for the <laughs> pretty much the rest of the match, unless this goes into the late game. Yeah. Uh, he's really far behind. And Ironside's gonna be taking a knife-free dragon here. Uh, Yami just got caught sight of that with a Sona ward right before it was slain. So, oh, and as insult to injury, Greenleaf is going to be taken out that ward hmm. with the pink ward placement there. So, it's worth yeah, mentioning just... that although Anvium is behind on farm and he probably will never catch up, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, he's not a champion like Zed or somebody who is totally reliant on farm and absolutely must snowball or is worthless. Um, a, a non, you know, a very weak Oriana is still very effective because of Shockwave and because of the other AoE slow and the sprint and the shield. She's a utility mage, and yeah. that way, you know, you shut down Anvium. Well, not that big of a deal. Good point. Um, although he is very far behind uh, against this, against the uh, Malzahar player, who by the way has swapped to mid. Um, She's it's about 20 spot. CS. It's about 20 CS. I think if, the, if Oriana can pull something off, especially with a help with help from Asian Pride, ganking, then she could actually easily overcome him. Um, but she is behind. I just don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, if all, if they were to stay where they at right now and just scale up evenly with everybody else in the long run, Oriana would still be more useful to the team. She does have that tower down in the mid lane, which is going to allow her to just turtle up and farm for a while. And yeah. I hope that's what Ambium decides to do, because. Uh, yeah, we want to we want to see him shine a little bit in this match. Yeah. We don't. I mean, AP carries are the most fun to watch, right? All those yeah. skill shots. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe to nah. you because you play AP carry. I like watching supports. I like watching uh, people killing wards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exciting. Fun. Yeah. We're about to see a four-man gank from the looks of things in the bot lane right now. But Yami is aware of this. However, Arc Slash turns Ooh. around to go for a Crescendo. They're gonna fight this, my man. <laughs> oh, and let's a three bounce. Oh my god, I can't believe that. 
fighting the that three v two. There's the cataclysm. Arc slash flashes out. They're gonna sacrifice Zach in a three in a three v four, but that's fine by them. Uh, they traded one for one in a three v four situation, killing uh, Jan oh, almost oh, instantly. Oh, 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 oh! But the uh, the ace in the hole, I think it was blocked somehow, some way, or maybe it just wasn't enough to get the kill. Uh, freaking directed camera made me miss that one, but yes, Ace in the Hole was used, and it did not get a kill back there. Asian Pride now in danger, about to get dove by yeah. the top lane rise from Lear, except Lear is really low on mana, so he, he can't quite make that happen from the looks yeah. of things. Lear's about 20 CS ahead, even with the death, uh, so other than, I mean, clearly showing the dominance of that champion, even with that one huge mistake, giving up that kill, he's still able to stay ahead in CS, and I think that Lear is going to be a serious force to be reckoned with. If he hadn't made that mistake early game, he would already be snowballing and roaming like mad. Uh, but as yeah, it stands, yeah. he's still going to be in a really strong position very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lyra is definitely in control of this top lane right now. I don't think we've seen any jungler intervention to speak of up there. He's just overloading minion after minion with his Tear of the Goddess. It does appear that he's going to be going for a fairly standard Rise build, uh, at least in the early game. But you could you never really know. I mean, <laughs> he could uh, he could take that Catalyst, build an ROA or a Veil, sure. and just change it up whenever he wants to. Um, that's the beauty of Rise, Mage Tank. Those builds are pretty darn versatile. Wow, Alias clearing up his red very quickly there, and uh, looks like this is a bit of a got a bit of downtime here as these players are going back to buy here. Komar, let's take a look at the standings though. It looks like Ironside is significantly far ahead in gold. Yes. Where has that gold gone? It has gone primarily to the Rise player, the top yeah. lane. Lear, as well as Malzahar, even though he was in that 2v1 situation for so long, he had all that jungler, jungler support. And of they, course, also got the they also used. got the one dragon, yeah. Defensively right there to right. prevent the banner pull. Actually, he had just banner pulled in, but... Yeah, Ambien forced to use his ult there as a defensive ability just to kind of stay and turtle up here in the mid lane so he can farm. And that's the beauty of Orianna. Even when you're behind, you still have that really powerful ability that you can rely on either to save your own skin or to save an ally or to initiate for your team. There's so many different things you can do with the, with such a powerful ult. And then she also has all the other abilities too. So not, you know, Malzahar is much more dependent on farm and snowballing than she is. And speaking Absolutely. of farm and snowballing, grabbing Asian Pride, I believe his ult, his, uh, his passive rather, is still down. It is slingshot down, but out. the slingshot... Oh, here comes the Ace and the shield perfect from wow, Asian that Pride. Is tanking right there, that fellas. That was like an accidental. And a crescendo to catch Alias, totally turning this fight around. They did manage to pick off Zach finally, uh, but they might give up a little bit more for that. It's still 1v1, uh, 1 to 1, though. Tristana, left his nut, comes in real hot wow. on Malzar, chasing him to the ends of the earth. He will probably give up his life for this kill. No! I think he's going to get away with that crowbar. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> Left is yeah. nut. What a play. Taking advantage of, of Malzahar, with, who is completely out of mana, and had no way to escape. No escapes, no, not enough CC, and uh, getting the kill and escaping. Well, Look at this ballsy, ballsy play here from Lear. He's yeah. way behind enemy lines, and he's chasing Oriana back to his own base right now. Yeah, John will come in. screwed right now. Yeah. Uh, he's going to flash for this so he doesn't get off the execute. Uh, I, okay. Lear's just securing that kill there with his flash. Um, but yeah, man, did you see that accidental ace in the whole shield from Shen? <laughs> I, I want to say it was accidental. I don't know. I think yeah. that was all skill right there. I mean, he was he, <laughs> he, he just, jumped in with Stand United and uh, blocked most of the damage, and then Zach he didn't even he didn't even move though. As soon as he TP'd in, he he just face shielded that ace in the hole. It was hilarious. Oh yeah. <laughs> we need to get that on replay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. All right, so it does look like Yami. Uh, I wouldn't say they're, they were able to come back at all from that last exchange. Um, still, Orianna's being really hassled. <laughs> Dove behind enemy lines there by the Rise. She doesn't even have a kill yet. The Master Race is struggling in this match. He needs his team to support him and defend him in lane so that he can just try to catch up in farm. He's even behind the jungler in terms of CS right now with a total of 2.7k yeah. in the bank. Of course, uh, to, to his uh, defense, a, uh, Asian Pride was in his lane stealing all of his farm. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that had a lot to do with it right there. Which one? The Zack? <laughs> yeah, the Zack one. Yeah, I know which one, right? We still haven't found I'm a good solution kidding. for that, guys. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, A's... A's as Wyan Pride and as an Asin Pride. They're, they're both Asian Pride. Man. I know. They're but, both uh, fighting for their continents here. Yeah, Asian but, with a uh, Y. Or this will be a contested dragon for the looks of things. Zach is gonna last the extinction shot. Combined oh. with the let's bounce and the shockwave. Let's bounce. Not enough damage to kill anybody here, but the follow-up left is not now very aggressive positioning. Yes. We'll be grabbing up a double kill from the looks. Oh, the jukes from Jarvan. But it <laughs> doesn't matter. Though. 
Not Nami. enough. And oh there's the reset, God. another jump in, and the power of Shockwave and Let's Bounce comb combination. We talked about this before the game started, who had the better team fighting comp, and that was my pick uh, for all those combining those different abilities, and that was perfect. I mean, Envium, despite being far behind, proving his worth in that battle uh, with that Shockwave setting everything up. Oh, uh, also, yeah. just amazing play by Leftist Nut, uh, knowing exactly... <laughs> How the limits of his champion, able to jump in and, uh, with two people right in his face, but he knew yeah. that he was going to be able to Shotgun kill them. Shotgun range, man. Shotgun, Shotgun range. range. Yeah, that was like, yeah, that was Graves esque. <laughs> and uh, got very, two very resets nice. in that fight. You know, yeah. jump, reset, jump, reset, and jump. Pretty nice. With that last play, ladies and gentlemen, Yami has taken the lead. Um, they've always been ahead in kills for the most part, but now they're ahead in terms of gold. Uh, just after grabbing that team fight and dragon right there. The master race, ladies and gentlemen, proving their superior team fighting skills in that last play. As up until then, we hadn't really seen a true team fight, uh, obviously, given that it was before 15 minutes. And now I think Asian Pride, or, or <laughs> excuse me, Team Yami, I think they're in control of this of this fight right now. I think, uh, I think, man, they're going to come back from this. Yeah, the, they've definitely passed up, passed them up on gold, picking up that dragon, uh, and really made up for you know the. Uh, First, it erased the dragon that they got earlier, that the uh, that their opponents got earlier, and uh, getting ahead on kills has now kind of overwhelmed the CS lead, which previously favored Ironsides. And mm -hmm. uh, Iron and Lee are staying in with all these ganks just to Look get that tower. This. May die for it, may not. Uh, it looks pretty likely. Oh, yeah, there man. it goes. Two ults used to take down Lear in the top lane. Not happy about that tower going down. <laughs> no. Uh, Team Yami retaliated. I think, Lear, I think Lear was perfectly fine with the trade, though. Yeah, I do believe so, but uh, definitely. Yami is not uh, not allowing Lear to dominate that lane any longer as uh, Zack and Shen very well collaborated gank in the top lane and now they're going to be looking to push down the mid tower here it's only going to take two more shots from Tristana he might go for it right here but Illyrius is having none of that they need more reinforcements yeah they do that tower's not be able got to no take help. this mid tower <laughs> instead they will however take the top lane tower the tanky tanky combination, the Asian Pride combination in the top lane. Asian Pride 1 and Asian Pride 2 just work together to take down that tower in the top lane yeah. as a result of uh, the turtling from Ironside in the mid lane. So definitely Asian, or excuse me, Yami now taking full advantage of their advantage and uh, pushing their objectives at this point in time. Right, 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 right. Yeah, taking that top lane, and now they can push this mid one like almost instantaneously. Like Tristana just wants to basically three shot it, and that's exactly what she's gonna yeah. do. Jenna Shield, obviously not gonna <laughs> provide that much protection to that tower, and there you go. So they actually just traded. Uh, they they traded Lear um, and two towers, and they got one tower. So not a Look good trade at, the at all. Look at the failed slingshot yeah, from Asian Pride. <laughs> I you think he was uh, trying to cancel it or something. I don't know. <laughs> that was yeah, pretty that amazing. Could have potentially been a 5v5 team fight there, but Yami would prefer to buy. And that's exactly what they're doing here, folks. Taking a look at some of these builds, is there anything unusual going on here, Chrome? Well, I don't think so. Uh, very straight lace appears. Yeah. Oriana's still lacking a lot of ability power at this point in the match, but uh, Yeah, they're completely relying on Leftist Nut for their for their serious damage. That will work for them because they have the kind of crowd control ults to and, and as well as, you know, Shen's taunt to uh, you know allow it to happen and, and plenty of peel and Shen's ult can protect your sauna so they, they've got it they've got everything they need uh, the only mm -hmm. downside of the strategy is if they make a big blunder uh, or if Ironsides makes a huge play with vision control and manages to pick leftist nut and pick Tristana, if they do get that pick, then Ironsides can just run rampant on their team because they have no other reliable damage except for Tristana. So mm -hmm. they're, um, yeah, I mean, you know, that's why they call it a carry, right? I mean, it's, they need Leftist Nut in every fight or else they can't do anything. Yeah, he is very instrumental to Yami's victory right now. I do want to know Arc Slash running around with Oracle's Elixir and Mob Boots clearing out all enemy wards here. Except walking right by this one here. Is he not see that? No, he got it. But actually, both sides yeah. of Oracles taking out vision wards. Yeah. Um, Two so pink guys for level 20, not bad. That's right. <laughs> Battle of the supports here in this matchup between Yami and Ironside. <laughs> Although Sona, I gotta say, with the mob boots, more impressive movement, man. Well, she might be faster right now, uh, you know, but uh, Jana's got that Philo Stone. That's so true. in the long run, that's probably a better investment. Yes, sir. As this does appear, that it will be a long game. Uh, we'll be going into the late game, which means we might see Ambium come back here a little bit if he can still, you know, catch up. He's still pacing with Zach on farm. He's actually behind by about a thousand gold of the jungler. Well, yeah. 
But yeah. as you said to his defense, it was basically a, a dual lane in the mid. It was. It was a dual lane and they were splitting game. CS. Uh, that's the reason why. That it is the way it is. Uh, and you might... I mean, the thing is, 80, 80 CS at 20 minutes, that's kind of unrecoverable. Uh, I mean, he can spend the whole rest of the game farming and maybe uh, catch up, but it's really, I mean, from what we've seen so far, it's really unlikely that Ironside is going to let him do that. So I don't I don't believe that Ambium is going to get a competitive level of CS or a competitive level of gold to be able to do real damage. That's why I think that Left is Nut's going to be uh, the essentially, you know, the only damage dealer. So essentially it's going to be Tristana plus four supports. That's what he's got <laughs> going right on right now. The one. Tristana the and eighth. four supports. The only. All right, so if you're in the shoes of Ironside, what is the most effective way to assassinate leftist nut? Yeah, vision. I don't control. think they have the champions for it. I don't think they do. They don't have a. They don't have a true assassin. Uh, however, however, Rise, uh, the Rune Prison, is really good against Tristana because she is very mm. slippery, and that is an auto lock stun. <laughs> and, yeah, 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 And it's instant auto lock stun. It's, so it's actually true. better. I mean, it's technically not a stun, but you know what I mean. It, it's it's yeah. for the for the purposes of well, killing Tristana, ADC, it is one. It, I guess ADC it's very important because she can still life steal while she's while she's prisoned. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, of course, it's not going to be a Leer doing a one v one though. Uh, they're going to need to have vision control so that they can ambush her and have the combination. Probably they probably want Alias there at least. I mean, one of the they have two different people with a good knock up. Mm -hmm. So they need one of those two there to follow up after the rune prison and hopefully burst her down before she can rocket jump out, or uh, just have a just have people in position to catch her after she rocket jumps. One of those two. That's what they got to do. It's got to be a pick while she's farming, and uh, I think catch I think it's all on box stop here, folks, uh, for Ironside. I it's think true. he's got to get yeah. He's got to get in range for another grasp on yeah. Chris, on Tristana. Uh, however, that's putting himself in a very messy position. Yeah. In, a team, in a team in fight, he'll it. never be able to do that. Never in a team fight. There's four people peeling for Tristana right now, and all of them have knockbacks and knockups. Speaking and of grab. team fight, here comes a TP from Rise. There will be a full blown team fight. Oh, the Nether Grass was used on Zack, and the teams yeah, are totally split. Good. Alias, just completely apart from his team, but he oh he did go down there, and this is messy, messy, messy. It is. Left is not again shotgun range, very aggressive positioning. He's got to be careful with this. Yeah. He's about to get picked wow. off. Ace in the hole might just do the job. Oh, he Takes headshot the team instead. My goodness. Oh uh, boy. I give my life for yours. Yeah, absolutely. He's, so that was actually a pretty impressive play. Oh my gosh. Uh, that they managed to, to pull that off. Base marker, base marker. Oh, needs more oh. range. Down goes Tristana. Wow. Now Ironside turning the tables. Caitlyn coming through for her team right there. I, I can't even pronounce your name, man. Oh. But uh, they might even get an inhibitor out of this. Yeah, they picked Shen the at the ways. very end. I mean, Greenleaf boy. No, no, no. I mean, they got BM Greenleaf and they got a guy that looks like Greenleaf boy. Uh... So we got two different people called Greenleaf and two different people called Asian Pride. I don't know what's going on here. But oh, is it more effective to get this dragon, or should yeah. they be pushing right now? Probably dragon. Yeah. I was a bit premature with my inhibitor speak. Uh, but, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zach is, is only level 11, so his res timer is really short. Uh, so even if they really pushed for it, the best they could get would be this, the inhibitor turret, and that's even questionable. Mm -hmm, but it's only because yeah. of the short rest timers. It's only 23 minutes in the game. I know it doesn't feel like it after that team fight, but it's only 23 minutes in the game. And ultimately what happened there, I, I mean, everybody was so far out of position. You know, their positioning was not good at all. Everybody was so split. And yeah. they didn't have the proper setup. They didn't have the setup that they wanted. They didn't have the chance to initiate the way they wanted. And that's why it went the way it did. Uh, and I, not, I'm, I'm actually very impressed as well. Like you mentioned this already, the Caitlyn player. Uh, I mean, we've been talking about Leftist not playing the carry, but clearly there is a perfectly even carry. Even if he's behind on farm, there is a perfectly even carry mm -hmm. on uh, Iron Sides to compete with him. And that's a, that's a rough position for Yami to be in. Yeah, I would say he's, he's an aggressive player. Although not as audacious as Leftist Knight. Rarely do you see people like Leftist not playing AD carry. They're just so, so aggressive. Yeah. He's basically in melee range the entire time during these team fights. That last fight, it bit him in the ass. Other fights, it may work out in his favor. But definitely the Caitlyn player, Griffin Boy, Gr Greenleaf Boy, is a more consistent in his performance so far. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, yeah we're about that. to see a team fight in the mid lane here from the looks of things. Zach is being forced back due to taking lots of poke there. Uh, his passive is, uh, is it active? I don't, I can't see. Yes, uh -oh. it is. Yeah. So he has his passive, uh, which means he can really play aggressively in this team fight. He can initiate prematurely if he needs to. Um, just to just to you know sponge those ultimates, etc. Now Greenleaf Boy forcing this tower down. It's down to one hit, and Lear is going to do the finishing blow. And uh, that was not bad. They, they actually bullied that tower really effectively and taking advantage of Caitlyn's incredibly long range. 
Mm -hmm. You know, at level one, the longest oh, there it game. is. There's That's a shockwave, but only on two people. Not the best. The? Box top is actually going to get out of there and survive that fight. Now they're going to turn around on Alias, so I don't think that they're happy about that at all. But Alias diving so deep actually works against them. And Yami actually turned that fight around despite the initial opening being a little bit questionable. Uh, mm -hmm. Now they lost their support, no, but no, they're no, not, no. they don't really care about that that much. And uh, now we see Yami uh, really turning things around here. No, that was uh, that was really well played by. Oh shoot! Wow! Just not almost Lear. got overloaded to right smithereens there? right there. That was some damage. Yeah, no kidding. He's about to. Man, they are they are churched from Lear right now. Yeah. Lear is dishing out way too much damage. They're like, okay, we need to chase this rice kill. Oh shit! Never mind. Yeah, they, they can't afford to fight him. <laughs> they can't afford <laughs> to let him get a double kill off of that fight, which is what he was about to do, perhaps more. Yeah, well, he's got a frozen heart now, folks. As soon as he finishes his Seraphs, yeah. uh, he's going to be really scary. Yeah. Which I assume is his next build order. But uh, Yami going to take advantage of that last team fight and try to push down the mid tower, try to get square. But not happening because Alias is in position to defend. I want to point out that Ironside did a fantastic job in that last fight of ignoring Asian Pride, the Zac player, uh, as he was doing precisely what he should have done, which is do sort of a shaky initiate to absorb ultimates because he had his passive active. Mm -hmm. He was counting on the fact that they would focus him down because he was out of position, but uh, they completely ignored him and instead chased down the carries, which is exactly what they needed to do. But even so, the superior team fighting from Yami in that last fight, too much to overcome. Is Ambion finally caught up? He now has a blasting wand with uh, about 1.2k in the bank, so I'm not really sure what mm -hmm. he's going to do about his ability power deficit in this match. Now, he, he's but, got a, almost an assist score. Um, he does have a little bit of CS, but only about three times what Sona does. In fact, if you look at the total gold, although Sona unfortunately did not go for a Philo Stone, uh, she's still only about 300 gold behind. So Anvium is only 300 ahead of the support in terms of gold. That's a, not good. <laughs> uh, but, in, but to his credit, uh, the enemy Malzahar is only about 600 ahead of him, which is not that big of a deal. So Box Top also not really snowballing. What they got to worry about is Rise. Lear is the one who is the real danger as far as yeah. AP goes. And Malzahar as well as Anvium both for focusing more on their utility than on their burst damage. And then, of course, lastly, the 280 carries. Caitlyn is actually ahead of Leftist Nut by a very small amount. Uh, it's not that huge of an amount, but it's it, it will. It's not really going to affect a team fight that much. Um, and Tristana's built-in steroid abilities might actually give her the edge. So Leftist Nut may have the edge in the team fights, uh, but uh, they got to have the right setup because we saw already where the, their setup was kind of screwy. Then they uh, they couldn't really follow up the way they needed to, and uh, they need to scobble those ults so they can just completely apocalypse uh, Iron Sights. <laughs> That's what they need to do. <laughs> Yeah, it's all coming down to left this nut for Yami here. His yep. positioning is going to be key in this next fight. Yes. We'll wait to see if he continues to play this really ballsy, aggressive play like he is right now, in fact, almost in banner pull range. Or, uh, oh, Shen go. Oh, boy, Asian back. Pride pulling that trigger way early on Stand United, and Ironside's yeah. got to be extremely happy about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of shielding they could have used in that last fight. Absolutely. Especially on their AD carry. But shielding instead, and it was split used pushing on power. Zap. Split pushing power split. as well, yeah. Zack with his passive active, he should be using the Stand United uh, after he's been resurrected yeah. on him. But perhaps maybe a misclick, I don't even know, just Twitch Reflex. There we go, finally initiate, combined with the Shockwave. Only on Zach Aliens is though, not, not ideal, power. not ideal. And Lear is still at full health and able oh, to do his Leftist thing. Nut. Look at that. Look at his positioning, he's now playing a lot more passive, staying back, waiting to get in range of the shotgun, or waiting to get in shotgun range until it really wow. counts. But wow. no, he just wow. got chased down and killed Destroyed right there. Destroyed Leftist Nut there. That shockwave may have lost in that team fight. I mean, they only picked up the tank because Jarvan is, of course, building pure tank, as you probably noticed by now. Alias is exactly the wrong person they want to target with Shockwave. And because they had kind of a very poor initiate, what happened was the two carries overwhelmed their one. I mean, we have Rise, they have Caitlyn. Both of them solid, solid carries. We know that Lear, who, if you just tuned in, was actually Count Cutula from the earlier tournaments, changed his name. So we know he is an amazing top laner and can play pretty much whatever he wants. He is truly carrying the way an AP carry is supposed to be, just like Greenleaf Boy doing the same on Caitlyn, whereas the blue team, Team Yami, only has Leftist Nut on Tristana. They have the superior team fighting comp in terms of their abilities, but they have to actually use them correctly. If they screw up like that, then they're going to lose every fight. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're very spot on about your judgment of, of Anvium. Until he finishes that decap, which I'm assuming he's building right now, uh, he is basically a support, a support champion, and yeah. a support champion cannot afford to botch his ultimate 
by using it on a straight tank, which yeah. is precisely what he did in that last fight. The other, the so, other issue is he is not catching up on CS. Like, we talked about whether or not he was going to be able to. I mean, I didn't think he'd be, actually catch up, but I thought he'd do better than he is. I mean, he only got 40 CS in the last 10 minutes, and he mm. really needs to be doing more than double that. Uh, you yeah. Know, he needs to be going, clearing the jungle. He needs to be clearing everything just so he can have some AP. And we actually had a pause... But when you consider that, that he's not the AP carry, he's not the main AP carry, they have a second one that's doing 2,000 even better, that's why uh, Yami's in serious trouble. They have to have the proper initiate and the proper coordination of ults. They can't have another screw up like last time, or they will lose the game. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a counterattack dragon, but it's going to be evaporated before Ironside can respond. But will they engage the team fight no less? Yeah. I think Jarvin's pulling back here. Ailis is like, oh, dang it, we missed that opportunity. Come on, team, let's mobilize. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably is going to come down to the Baron fight uh, very soon, although we don't have any vision in the nest. Um, we haven't even seen anyone go near Baron this entire match. Now, going past the 30 minute mark, I've only seen a couple full blown team fights. Looks like they're more focused on towers than anything, um, which is not a bad thing. But I do believe Sona's positioning indicates. Ooh, oh, there's whoa. a catch on left this night. Nice. What did I say? Let's go back the, about, just in your mind, go back about 15 minutes and think to what did Chromar say they need to do to beat Team Yami? They need to catch Leftist Nut with a perfect catch. And then Hengus added they need say to do it with <laughs> Malzahar. Right, right, right. They need that suppressed. That's how they're going to do it. If Malzahar doesn't have his flash, it's really hard to do that. Yeah, right absolutely. There, flash, absolutely. Nether Grasp. Oh, man. But That's he pulled exactly it off. what Ironside needed right that there. That was your perfect support Malz play right there. <laughs> That's not support Malz, he man. Caught, he caught decap. <laughs> he's got a decap and a grail in the making right now. He's not yeah, messing well, around. I mean, he, no, he, he is he is a support mouse at this point because he is way behind where he needs to be in terms of his damage. But uh, it wasn't him by oh, himself. Shoot. I mean, he's premature he Asian pride. They need to focus yeah. down Zach now. Oh which is exactly man, what they're Team Yami is hurting right now. They have no chance yeah. of challenges there, and they don't have any damage. Yeah, they really dropped the ball. That was way too early. What they should have done is just sent Zach in as a kamikaze to try to grab that Baron. He messed it up, but they didn't have to follow through. No, definitely by not. giving up another kill. They gave up, but yeah, they gave up a free kill for Shen. That is something they cannot deal with right now because Leftist Nut is alive. But how is he going to survive if they force a team fight? If Ironside force a team fight, they've got 30 seconds before uh, Asian Pride Blue. Uh, where am I call them? Asian Pride Blue and Asian Pride Green because of their champions. <laughs> Asian Pride Blue has got 20. See, I knew we'd come up with a solution for this name thing eventually. Well, that's right? only because this match, man. I, I know. Pick... Well, we'll just change it every time, you know, okay, depending on okay. what the color of their champion is. So Asian Pride Blue is uh, got 10 seconds on the res, but they're not actually not going to force the kill, the force anything from Ironside. They got the Baron. They're happy. And now they're pulling ahead in terms of team gold by, what is that, about 5k, just 5.5k. So mm -hmm. they're doing pretty well, but what really works for them is the distribution of gold, because despite the fact that Caitlyn is technically behind on CS, she's ahead on Tohunter individual gold because of the kills. Look at mm -hmm. Leftist Nuts kills, he only got two. Even though they had won a lot of team fights early on and racked up a lot of team kills, he wasn't getting the kills. The kills are evenly distributed among the team members with their tanks picking up three each and their support picking up three. In fact, the two carries are the least number of kills. That is a huge problem for Yami, and if they mm -hmm. don't have perfect team coordination and perfect ult coordination, then they can't do anything. Yeah. Do know that Leftist Nut is working on his QSS right now. I would, If I were him, yeah. I would prioritize that right now, because the next time he gets Nethergrass by Malzahar, he's going to... It's basically a win-or-lose situation right there. He yes. has to survive the team fight he cannot get in order like to win. That. I guarantee yeah. you he will not get uh, Nethergrassed or killed in a team fight. Uh, that way, I mean, Leftist Nut is, and he's not like, you know, he's a great player. He's not going to let that happen to him. That pick happened just because of a lapse in judgment because there was nothing going on. Mm. And he just basically uh, underestimated Malice's ability to close hey, the gap with the flash. This might turn into a team fight here. J4 yep. being very aggressive. Wow. There. The Zac passive is proc. It does look like they're going to have to abandon the Zac. They can't oh, afford to man. engage in this 4v5, which means this inhibitor is probably going to go down yeah, for Yami. They, they can force this down. They don't have the. They're, they still have Shockwave and Crescendo, but it's not enough. They really need to let's bounce to complete that cycle, and they're gonna, they are going to force this inhibitor. Even in the 5v5, wow. the, the Ironside team does have the Baron buff, and they're taking yes. very good advantage of that right now. They probably are going to spin around and just take this middle inhibitor yeah. as well. Yeah, they're going to push mid lane is what they're going to do. Uh, that was a hell of a play, so Ironside's looking incredibly strong right now, not building a team around ult combos, but building a team around two amazing carries and a lot of utility. And uh, mm -hmm. using Malzahar as a utility mage, Interesting the way it worked out, and that was because of the lane swap. Of course, we got to remind people if they if they tuned in the middle of the game that they opened with a lane swap at mid lane. They drop, they swapped mid and bot lane. So both Malzahar and Orianna were in a two v one situation, 
and the junglers had to basically camp their lanes for the first 10 minutes. So what happened was they got behind on CS, they got behind on experience. And that is why your mid laners, your normally, who would normally be a mid laner, Malzahar and Oriana, are so far behind and not really contributing the kind of damage or building up the kind of AP they need. On the other hand, Lear on Rise went top lane solo and just stomped. Yeah. Although, Oriana st is starting to make a comeback in terms of her ability power. She's now at uh, 300, approximately. It fluctuates depending on what abilities are active. But, uh, yeah, she could start to melt some people. Maybe not quite what you would expect, but no. uh, definitely the death cap is going to allow her to, to farm easier at the very least. Um, but, yes, you're absolutely right. There's a huge deficit of ability power in this match, with the exception of Lear, who's on camera right now. Yeah. Uh, just completed his Seraphs and base recently and now building a Kindle gem. Um, not quite sure what he's going to use that for, but he's very, uh, very standard mage tanking this right now. But as you probably well know, Rise Mage Tank deals a lot of damage. And so <laughs> he's actually the number one damage dealer on the map right now. Although not quite the same utility that Malzar has with his Nether Grasp, mm -hmm. which is what has been instrumental in assassinating Leftist Nut because it's really the only ability they have, apart from maybe a Cataclysm, that is capable of assassinating Tristana. Uh, but really, nothing really compares to how powerful Nether Grasp is. Does Leftist Nut have a QSS yet? Oh my goodness. There goes the Nether Grass right now on Leftist Nut, but the Stand United was uh, pretty much able to sponge all yes. of that. Flash Crescendo, nice and crescendo. now Yami, oh. this is the initiate that we're looking for. Look yes. at Leftist Nut in the back, taking down the damage dealers one at a time. They've got to come out on top of this fight. Leftist Nut is at full HP, folks. It would be wise for Ironside to pull back here. I don't think they even have the Baron buff active anymore. No, no they, no, do they not. don't. And with Liar down, they're going to be in serious trouble. That uh, initiate was almost, almost, almost perfect. It started out perfect. The only problem was that they got out of range of the Shockwave. Ironside was mm -hmm. able to dodge a Shockwave. Only Lear got caught. That's why Lear is dead. If they, anybody else got caught, they would be dead. So that is why they need the perfect initiation. If that Shockwave had been a little bit better in terms of positioning, or if they had been a little bit whoa, slower escaping whoa, it, they'd whoa. all be dead. And there's a Very nice initiation aggressive. from Asian Pride catching Box There goes the goner. shotgun range. Oh. Tristana coming in, trying to kill this Kayla. Oh, that nice monsoon. Totally just, oh my gosh. Yeah. That was just totally denied right there. Yeah. Just <laughs> Disengage Queen Janna. That is her new skin. Disengage Queen. So toward left Greenleaf, right there. Greenleaf saving the rest of their team for sure. That's why I always say it's impossible to gank Janet Caitlyn because they have uh, way too many disengages. It's way too tough to catch them. <laughs> and it's true. It's true. And so that you, we can see that this game is clearly not over. Yami still, still after everything, has the better team fighting comp. They have the better team fighting comp. They have to use their abilities, chain their abilities properly, but they have it. And when they do oh, it man. like that, where it's just it's almost perfect, you can kind of see it come out. I'm loving this match so far, Kumar. This, yeah. is, this could still go either way. Yes, Ironside has the goal advantage, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. It comes down 100% to team fighting abilities here. Yes. And Yami, they're really trying hard here. They're not looking to throw this match anytime soon. And they're playing quite well now after you know some of these mistakes we've seen all game long. Um, the last two fights have been indicative of a team that wants to win this match. So yes. obviously they do. But look at this stutter stepping from left. It's not, he's almost fully stacked here, ladies and gents. Now he's got a Blade of the Rune King. I, he needs that QSS to stop this Nether Grass, but I think he's just prioritizing his damage at this point. Yeah. I think he's working on that. I mean, I think he showed in the last fight that the Nether Grass is not fatal to him. After all, it's really not that much damage um, compared to what he can take from the other rest of the team. Mainly, he just needs to not get caught by it, or he needs somebody to break it up for him. I mean, they've got Let's Bounce, they've got a Taunt, they've got a Crescendo, they've got Buster. Well, he can't use it while he's Buster Shot at obviously, and then they've got Shockwave. So they have a lot of ways to break their ally out of that ability. Uh, Crucible doesn't work on it, to my knowledge. If someone can correct me if that's not true, but to my knowledge, Crucible, uh, the item, does not work on Suppression. Um, but they have just about everything else that they can use to uh, to break him out. So I don't think I think they're okay with that. That's why they're he's he's not prioritizing the uh, the QSS. But he will get it soon. He really does need it. He's got 385 CS, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be the last oh item God. he builds, um, which is really really crazy. Yeah. I'm not he's sure actually what the Baron really boy on gold because of that. Yeah, he's oh my goodness, Asian Pride using his passive to his advantage there, trying to consume all the ultimates possible. Leftist Nut now has really great position. Wow. Jarvan just got blasted. And I think they're gonna have to retreat Ironside, that is, because the AD carry from Yami is just in such a position of power right now. Lear, really, really aggressive, trying to assassinate yeah. Sona, but man, you gotta watch out. You're about to get shotgunned by Leftist Nut right there. <laughs> He's so powerful at this yeah, point. Bo man. Both He's... tanks proven their worth there. Uh, Asian Pride uh, opening and holding them for there for so long as they try to force him down, and then Shen as well. I mean, that's exactly what the tank needs to do. 
do. They need to be in such a ballsy position that the enemy team feels like they have no choice but to fight them. That's the way you do it. I mean, they had there was no way that they could engage Leftist Nut. He was far too mobile, had far too much peel, and was far oh, too gosh. dangerous to fight with all those people. I don't know if him. Yami's going to be able to counterattack this bear. And Caitlyn's damage output is nothing to Winsat right yeah. now. He's dealing just as much damage as Tristana. He's yet to complete his Rune King, but he does have the QSS. There it is. Yeah. And there goes the Baron Nasher. Uh, Yami has not gotten a single Baron kill all game long. Yeah. So that. I mean, at this point, with how stacked their team is, it's not that big of a deal to give up these Barons, but what the real problem is, is that buff for the next team fight is something they don't want to have to deal with. They're going to have to rely on their synergy even more now. Um, so it's really... <laughs> Man, this is a nail biter. I don't know if they can pull this off. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely at a disadvantage. They've got... These minions are going to take down this inhibitor, which is a shame. Um, and now they have to deal with that Baron buff. Right. I don't know, man. Yami's got to pull one out of the hat with this one. <laughs> they can do it, this man. Be close. They can do it. It's so close. And they've shown the superiority of their team, their comp and team fighting, where they allow Zack to use his passive and basically to die and not die. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're, they have the superior tanks. I mean, Alias is not nearly as good of a tank as uh, the other two tanks because of his champion. Jarvan is more versatile, more utility, Don't hate on J4, and uh, more damage. I'm listening to how things he has you? more of. If thank Pierce you very much. If heard what you had to say right now, <laughs> oh, how yeah, dare I'm you? talking up how good J4 is. I'm sure Pierce will hate that. Uh, but he doesn't have the same... <laughs> he isn't uh, as uh, tanky as those two champions, Zack and Shen. So I think that Alias, uh, you know, he's going to be in trouble. He has, all, after all, very low on farm. They've been monopolizing the farm that is Lear and uh, Greenleaf Boy. And not leaving a whole lot for their Jarvan player, so Alias has got to be careful okay, and not overdo it. Okay, here comes Stand United. He's got to TP in to reinforce his team fight. He'll probably end up being used on Zack unless they do some sort of a crazy dive on Leftist Nut, yeah, who's we'll see. being pretty ballsy with his positioning. He's oh, almost wow. in flash suppress range right now. He's got to be careful. He doesn't get caught by another nether grasp yeah he does now have a qss yes. though so if his reflexes are fast enough he could easily get away from this this is going to be really intense here folks there goes the Ooh. initiate little the shockwave lands on two people let's bounce it's going to be able to interrupt all these folks then the crescendo comes in yami just chained all their ultimates perfectly left it's not now in the back life stealing back to full hp and i think i think they might just overcome oh, this very wow. Oh, it's so close. Oh, wow. Ironside's actually pushed through that. That is amazing. They Ace pushed the through attack. the ult combo. And they're actually going to take this tower and probably take this inhibitor. If Team Yami can't win with that kind of advantage in the in no. initiation, then what the I heck are they going to do? I can't believe Ironside survived that chain of ultimates. Yeah. It was handled perfectly it was. almost. And they're still winning. There's still five men standing right they now. They even protected Box Top. I thought Box Top at least would be goner immediately. Uh, I mean, I figured they would put, put everything on protecting Greenleaf Boy and he'd make it out, but I thought they'd get boxed up at a minimum, and then Alias as well, and with those two down, basically, they can force the, you know, the carries having no uh, pr real protection, they would be able to force him back, but no, they could not oh, get either man. of them. Ironside playing this so safe right now, deciding to go back, even though they have Baron yeah. buff active, they want to broaden the gap here in terms of the advantage they had in items, which I have to say is responsible for their victory in the last team fight. It is gold that was responsible for that victory. Uh, the reason they were able to survive that chain of ultimates is because their their champions are so stacked. Yeah. Um, I mean, for God's so sake, look at Rise. I mean, he's... Yeah. He's, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if they can come back from this, man. He's got a frozen heart, Rod of Ages, Seraph's Embrace, and, I mean, and a Spirit Massage. Oh, uh, wow. Wow. He's Now he's building, uh, he's building Spell Vamp on top of it. So killing that Rise is going to be incredibly, incredibly hard, and they just have an opportunity to oh, do it, I guess. Just forget it. Don't even wow. focus Rise at this point. Yeah. Man. I mean, don't forget how much shielding Seraphs does with his mana pool. It's crazy. It is crazy. They need to assassinate Caitlyn above all. As actually, Caitlyn uh, is just as built as Tristana right now, almost. Uh, Left has not just sold his QF QSS, by the way, to buy a BF sword, as he was not able to complete. Um, what is What is that item called? that QSS builds into. The uh, Mercurial Scimitar. Right, 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 the Scimitar. He did not have the gold to complete the Scimitar for this next team fight, so instead he sold his QSS wow. and bought a BF sword. That is different. Because he is all damaged. That is what Leftist Nut is all about, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He cares about damage and nothing else. Just kidding. <laughs> He's a very balanced player, actually. I think he I think he judged from that team fight that he didn't have enough damage to kill Alias fast enough, and they, they he really, really needs that. He also got a couple licks on Greenleaf Boy before the fight started and couldn't, uh, couldn't kill him either. 
So I think yeah, Lexus Nut is realized oh. he just needs to prioritize damage. Meanwhile, uh, Greenleaf Boy does have a QSS. Uh, it's not terribly useful. He can break the taunt from Shen, but that's the, really the only thing because it doesn't work at all against the Let's. Oh, you break Crescendo too, but it doesn't work at all against Let's Bounce and uh, Here comes Shockwave. the slingshot. Nice initiate there. Let's Bounce. Not going to be very effective. The Shockwave was that missing. Shockwave. Wow. Yeah, but uh, wow, Orion in the back line is just so split right now. No, they Java's are. Monsoon they are. used to great effect. Left is not still is doing just fine here, but I think Yami is just giving up way too much damage at this point. Let us not go no, down let to ace not in the hole. No, let us not so overextended. Oh man, how do you let that happen, mm. Yami? That was a game loser right there. It, it was all or nothing. Let they had given up way too much damage right there. Sticking his face out there. Those tanks did a great job of keeping everyone busy. But uh, once, once Left is Nut came up in the front and got hit by Ace in the hole and nobody could block it, that, I mean, you can't let that happen. And that's going to go to Ironsides. Yeah. Uh, 45 minute yep. win and the first game for today Saturday uh, wow Angus that was really well played by Iron Side they yes. timed that push very effectively with Super Minions even if they lost that team fight that Nexus was in grave danger <laughs> anyways so uh, wow great job to both teams you guys Team Yami and Iron Side I do believe we'll be going into a game game 2 